Hi, I'm going to show you how to make this silk ribbon rose embroidered handbag. So all the instructions you need from start to finish. I've been through my scrap bag and I found some silks and some velvets that go beautifully together colour wise. And I've cut a piece of silk for the top band of the handbag, 19 inches by 6 inches. And here I have a piece of surf which is 18 inches by 2.5. Surf is silk embroidery ribbon foundation. You can buy this canvas on craftyattic.com. So I'm just going to now pin the surf onto the wrong side of the silk. Um, this silk is double sided so there isn't really a wrong side but um, obviously if you have a two sided thing make sure you stick it to the wrong side. I'm just pinning it um, in place and now I'm just going to use any old thread and just tack this uh, canvas to the, the fabric so that it doesn't move about and I know exactly where it's going to be. So there we are. So now what I need to do, that's what it's going to look like um, in the end, now what I need to do is just sew the ends together. So I'm just going to pin these and run them through the machine. So I'm going to pin them so that the ends of the canvas exactly meet each other and when I stitch it, I'm not going to stitch through the canvas, I'm going to stitch right along the edge of it so that it forms one continuous band. So there we are, I've, um, I've stitched now and you can see the canvas meets up in the middle. I've got some more tacking thread now and I'm just going to run a tacking thread along this bottom edge and just making sure that the, the fabric is turned under neatly. We're going to machine stitch it in a bit, but let's just do some tacking stitches for now to hold everything where it needs to be. So this canvas is quite important because it's going to allow us to um, stitch the silk embroidery ribbon flowers through it later on. You can sew through it quite easily. So here now I've got my completed band, I'm just turning it the right way round and you can see all these tacking stitches now are nice and um, neat there and they're holding things in place for us. So that's what the top band is going to look like. I've got some bag panels now and I've cut four um, five and a half inches by six inches and I've got two contrasting fabrics. I've got um, the silk here um, and I'm just going to run some gathering stitches along the long edge um, the six inch edge of the silk by running two machine stitches um, just next to each other and I'm going to make sure I don't catch the ends of the, these gathering threads when I sew this um, silk and this velvet panel together. So the idea is that we have one silk, one velvet, one silk, one velvet and we join them together in a band, in a continuous band to form the edge of the bag. So I'm just pinning these together now along the um, the shorter edge, so that's the five and a half inch edge, and I'm just going to machine down and I'm also going to machine that seam open. Um, so just run stitches either side of that seam just to hold it open and make it nice and neat because this is the outside of our handbag. I'm just doing the same again um, with this, uh, the other end of the silk panel, attaching it to the to the velvet panel there and I'm making sure that I don't um, stitch through those gathering threads because I'm going to need to get to the end of those in a moment. So again I've stitched the seam and I've stitched the, the seam open. So I'm just going to keep going with this until this forms a continuous band for the outside of our bag. So pinning and stitching as we go. So here I'm just going to close the ends of this off now by stitching the last two panels together. I'm going to do exactly the same as I've done um, with the others, just pin and stitch and then uh, sew the seams open. So here I have my side panel. Um, this is what's going to happen, Is um, this is the, the top band. The velvet panels are going to just slip underneath. Um, this top band and then the other velvet panel will be put in there straight and then you're going to gather the silk bit in the middle so these panels need to be straight as they go in with no gathers and the, the silk panels in the middle will have the gathers in them so I'm just going to draw a line 
um, sorry my shoulder's in the way there, with a piece of chalk so that we know how far down the band needs to come when we're pinning it. So I'm just drawing that line probably about 15 millimetres, um, half an inch, something like that from, from the top of that band there. And now I've got a visual now, I can see exactly where um, the edge of the band needs to come. Uh, the top band that is over there. So I'm making sure that the um, the silk um, that would line the inside of the band is out of the way. I'm not pinning through that, I'm just pinning through um, the surf and the one layer of silk. I'm pinning the velvet panels with no gathers and no puckers so it's completely straight up against this band. So I'm pinning there one end making sure that everything's lined up nicely. I'm now going to move and pin the other end in exactly the same way, not worrying for the moment that the silk panels in the middle are, are ruckled up, we're going to deal with that in a moment. So we're just pinning the other velvet panel so that it's in nice and straight and smooth. Again we're still following this chalk line here to make sure we're getting everything nice and straight. So there we are. Now what we need to do is to find the little ends of our gathering threads and just gently gather this silk panel on either side. So we're doing this on the back and the front. Just gathering it up so that the silk panel now fits underneath the, uh, the top band here, in our case the green band. So I'm just gently pulling the threads and gathering up. When you're running these gathering stitches make sure your machine is set on its longest stitch. Um, and it helps as well to take some of the tension off your machine. That will make the gathering easier to pull and it will make the stitches easier to pull out at the end. So continuing the pinning now, just going to keep pinning along. Um, I'm going to pin all the way around front and back um, just so that we can know everything's in exactly the right place. And then what we need to do is just over stitch on the machine. So I'm going to put this onto the machine and I'm just going to run a stitch about a millimetre um, in from the edge that will um, just hold everything beautifully neatly together. Okay, so now I've cut the bottom fabric panel, which is eight inches by three and a half inches. And I've just rounded the edges there, just chopped it off. Um, into a nice round shape. I've not been too um, anal about it, not worried too much whether they're all exactly the same. Um, they're, they're reasonably even. So now I'm just going to pin uh, now the bottom panel into the bottom of our bag. I'm finding exactly where the half point is on these end panels by folding and creasing it and just sticking a little pin in. I'm going to do exactly the same with the bottom panel so I know exactly where the centre of that is and I'm going to make sure that these two pins are next to each other and then I'll know that everything is in the right place. So I'm pinning right sides together and now I'm just going to pin this bottom panel into the bag with as many pins as I can to hold it, just working carefully around the corners and the edges here and just pinning all the way around as I go. So I've used a pair of pinking shears, if you've got some of these they're brilliant uh, to use with this type of fabric because it stops any fraying and it stops you getting covered in tiny little bits of velvet as well. So here I'm just pinning all the way around. So I'm going to do the same on the other end now, just establish where the centre of my bottom panel is and establish where the centre of the end panel is by folding it in half and putting a pin. I'm going to make sure that these two match up again on the other end of the bag and you can just ease the fabric around so that everything matches up.
just continuing to pin now and just easing uh, the fabric in. If you get a couple of little um, puckles and ruckles, well, that's absolutely okay because that's the design of this uh, silk panel is to um, pucker a little bit. So don't don't worry too much about it. Okay, I've eased that in there quite nicely now. It should fit quite well. So I'm just going to run that through the machine, um, running a seam about um, five millimetres or quarter of an inch um, in from the edge uh, when I finish pinning all these um, little panels in here, just easing away to get everything in. So there we are, I've run my seam now and I can turn the bag the right way round for the first time. There we go, there's the uh, basis of our little bag now. You can see that uh, the, the top there, we've still got the tacking stitches in and uh, the lining is still very free in there. I'm just going to now push um, the edges of this seam out on the bottom so we can clearly see what the bottom of the bag is going to look like. Um, and that's what our little bag is looking like at the moment. So I've got some lace trim here. I've been digging through my stash of bits and pieces. I think this lace goes really lovely and I want these two motifs here to line up centrally on the front of the bag over each of those seams. So I'm going to pin, I'm going to worry about the front first. Obviously I want the join to go onto the back of the bag and um, we're very lucky with this piece of lace because it's worked out that the motifs are exactly the right distance apart so that you can't really notice the join but we'll put the join on the back anyway. So I'm pinning the motifs on the front um, where I want them and then I'm going to work round to, to the centre back um, from, from each side. So I'm just pinning this down as I go and I'm pinning it over the overstitching um, that holds the band the top band to the actual bag itself. This is the fun part I always think when you start to decorate the bag because you can really go crazy with any bits and pieces that you've got. Um, your bag won't look exactly the same as mine because you've got a different stash of things and that's great. So I've pinned that on, I'm just going to run that through the machine there um, which I've done. I found some more uh, trim, um, this is like a fringed a uh, bit of braid which I really quite like the look of. I'm going to do exactly the same with that, I'm just going to uh, pin that down. Um, I can start at the, the back on this one. So I'm starting in the centre back and just pinning and then I can run it through the machine and there with the magic of telly it's all uh, stitched on. So I've got some more of my silk fabric and I've cut two pieces 17.5 by 3 and I've got some surf again when I've cut two pieces 16 inches by 1 inch. So the surf is what's going to give our little straps rigidity and the silk fabric is what's going to make them look pretty. So I'm just going to place this surf centrally now in, in the piece with the same gaps all the way around um, both ends and, and around the edges. I'm just going to lightly pin the surf down to the centre of this fabric. I'm going to bring one side over and pin. What I'm actually doing is now wrapping this piece of surf. You can order surf from uh, the craftyattic.com site. It's not very expensive and we do free postage if you um, order over £25. And um, That's free worldwide postage. If, in, if you live in the UK, we'll post anything free. Um, so now I've just folded over the other edge um, to, to make a nice neat edge and now I'm pinning um, which will be now the seam down the centre of this strap. So I'm taking the pins out that I put in before and just worrying about pinning the seam now. So obviously I've got two of these to worry about and uh, when I've pinned them like this I'm just going to run them through the machine I'm just doing an overstitch about a millimetre away from this um, edge of this little seam here. Um, just hold everything in place. So there I've got my uh, seam. I found this braid which is a really lovely colour and um, I'm going to use it to decorate but I don't want the edges of this to fray and it frays horribly. So I've just got some glue here, um, it's just a PVA craft glue and I'm just going to put a blob of glue so that it doesn't fray and do that on all of the cut ends 
Um, so I did that and it's, the glue is dried now um, so that we we know it won't fray. I've pinned it on and I've just sewn it now. Just run a machine stitch down either side. And this is where our strap is going to go, but we're not going to do the strap yet. We're now going to worry about the bottom. So you need to cut three panels 7.25 inches by 2.75 inches and just round the edges in exactly the same way that we did for the bottom panel. I'm just going to pin these together um, very loosely. This is to give the bottom of the bag some rigidity um, and yet still still give us the ability to sew through. So I've just stitched it um, with a machine to hold everything together and I've got some wadding now which is too thick so I'm just stripping some of that away. Just place my um, bottom panel on it there made of the surf and I'm just going to snip around with a pair of scissors so that it's the right shape and size. And then finish off this operation by just using um, some thread and just doing some very large tacking stitches just to hold the wadding and the bottom panel together. You don't need to worry about the colour of thread. Tacking stitches usually get either pulled out or hidden. In this case they're going to get hidden so just any old thread you like. And just sew the wadding to the, the surf on the bottom panel. So now I've got my bottom panel all fabricated there. I now just need to stick it into the bottom of the bag, wadding side down, so um, squishy side down. And I'm just going to push and pull it until it's in inside the bottom panel and it's sort of held within the seam there. So we can see that's what shape the bottom of the bag is going to take. I'm going to stick a few pins in now just to hold that bottom panel roughly in place. Um, no, I'm not. I'm tacking it. I tell a lie. So I'm just going to tack it in place there. Just a few big tacking stitches just to hold it very temporarily until we can get to um, stitching things a little bit more firmly. I really enjoyed making this bag. It was great fun. So now I've cut some uh, wadding, uh, which is four and a half inches by 16 inches. Uh, again, I've stripped off half of it because in my case it's too fat. And now I'm just going to push that band around inside the bag um, to actually give the bag some padding and also some rigidity so that it will stand up on its own. So I'm just making sure that the wadding is, is down to the bottom and there you can see it meets the seam at the top. You might have to just snip off a little bit where it meets up with itself if it's too fat or too long should I say. And You can see there it's coming um, roughly up to where that seam is. And uh, once again I'm just going to take some uh, tacking thread, do some large tacking uh, th stitches just around that wadding just to hold it in place uh, for a little while. And the nice thing about this bag is that none of these stages take very long so you don't really have time to get bored with the operation that you're doing before you're moved on and you're doing something a bit different which is always nice. So just large stab stitches there with some tacking thread holding everything together. There we go, just tacked all the way around there. So cut that thread off and the next thing I'm going to do is just push the uh, lace up out of the way there and I'm just uh, with a double thickness of machine thread I'm stitching little beads um, all over the outside of the bag about once every half inch to an inch. I'm not being at all um, careful about it, I'm just doing a very random um, application. So these stitches are actually going through the top fabric, through the wadding and then back through um, 
both layers again to, to form a kind of little quilted effect and you can see there we've got the little seed beads all over the bag it doesn't take as long as you think it will and you can see the inside of the bag now everything's fully stitched together um, all the layers are kind of unified now so we can turn our attention to the straps so we, we made these earlier I need to make sure that the lining piece on the band is up and out of the way and I'm just going to pin the straps with I folded the ends over um, and they're going to be behind the strap face I'm pinning the straps um, level with the braid that I did and I'm pinning them um, level with the join in the panels on the front of the bag if that makes any sense so we've got the red panel and then the purple panel either side and I'm lining the straps up with the center of the change of color so I'm going to sew about an inch up um, there I've put pins where I'm going to put stitches I'm going to just pin the the back one as well and so now you can see I've just machine stitched those down in a little square of machine stitching there so that holds everything nice and firmly and you can see now this lining just will cover up um, the insides of our strap okay so now I've got an air erasable pen I'm just going to draw some circles where I want uh, my silk ribbon roses to go these are so easy to do and they look absolutely stunning when you've done them they look really lush um, so all you need is um, just to do a few circles where you want the roses no artistic ability needed at all I've got some two millimeter white silk embroidery ribbon from craftyattic.com um, you must use pure silk for silk ribbon embroidery nothing else will fold small enough to allow you to pass it through the the fabric and you can see here with the silk we've got no trouble passing it through um, the surf the, the fabric there's even some braid here we're stitching through so it's all perfectly doable you will need a chenille needle which is a nice sharp point on one end and a nice fat eye on the other end to get the silk ribbon through so I'm gonna do in this in the circle in the center of the circle I'm just doing stitches radiating out and I'm doing five stitches and it's it's like the spoke of a wheel or a spider's web okay so you must have um, an odd number of uh, stitches for this to work so five or, or seven uh, five is ideal really but you must have an odd number of stitches so we're just doing this um, little spoke spoked wheel here I'm gonna go off now and, and do the rest of these um, so that we end up with about six or seven of them so I'm just gonna make all my little spokes at the same time all my little wheels And this is why it's important that you use the surf underneath this band here so here's uh, where all my little roses are going to go I've got some 13 millimeter pure silk embroidery ribbon from crafty attic and I'm just running it through a set of hair straighteners um, just to straighten it out make it nice and smooth and glossy um, you always should prepare your ribbon before you use it now I've got a chenille needle and a knot on the other end I'm going to bring the uh, 13 millimeter ribbon up through the center of one of these uh, little spoky wheely things um, you might find you need a little pair of pliers just to tug on this so I'm going to start this off with a French knot so I'm going to wind it around the needle three times don't need to worry about how you wind just get it round there push the needle back through the center of the spoke of the wheel as you pull the ribbon fairly tight and you'll form a little um, a French knot so it's a, a little bead type affair um, and you as I say you may find you need a pair of pliers just to pull this 13 millimeter ribbon through uh, your bag it's perfectly normal you haven't done anything wrong so give it an, a good sharp tug and now you should just be able to pull the ribbon tight through so that's the center of our rose so with your chenille needle with your nice sharp point bring the 13 millimeter ribbon back to the surface and now going to change needles to a blunt one so this has got a blunt end and a nice fat eye and you can just thread your ribbon on really easily and we're now just going to weave the ribbon over and under over and under these spokes and because there's an odd number um, you get this nice woven effect where everything lays over and under over and under um, as you go round and around so um, don't worry if the ribbon twists a little bit 
petals twist and, and a bit of twisting is good in these things uh, these these lovely big fat roses so you want to pull reasonably tight but not too tight because you want the roses to look as if they're um, fully in bloom and, and fully open so just keep going round in exactly the same way over under over under over under you want to keep going probably for longer than you think you can so just keep poking um, the ribbon around and around until you can't see those little spokes at all and your your ribbon rose looks nice and full you can see now the you can still see the ends of the spokes there a little bit so I'm going to keep going another couple of times around there nearly there you can use your needle to just find the spokes if they're hidden just keeping going there and then you'll need to put the, the sharp pointy needle back on when you've finished um, to poke the ribbon back through the fabric and get it on the the wrong side and just fasten it off with um, some standard thread so there I've put the the sharp needle back on and I'm just pulling it through to the other side I'm just going to weave it in there so there you can see that I've done uh, all of those roses, they've all been done in exactly the same way and we're ready now to paint them. So I've got some Setter Silk um, PBO silk dyes. Um, these are especially for dyeing silk, they won't affect the fluidity of your silk. Um, what I do is I only buy the primary colours, they're about three or four quid a bottle um, and if you're only good at mixing colour, you, these are all the colours that you will ever need. Um, the little bottles you can see to the top right there are just colours that I've mixed in the past and I've had leftover so I've just put them in some tiny little bottles you can get from a craft store and they cost about 25p each, they're not expensive at all. Um, so I'm just going to now mix some colours. Always keep the ends of your ribbon, when you're sewing and you cut the ends off when you've woven them in on the back, just keep the ends of the bits of silk because they're really good for testing colours on. Um, and you can just paint a bit of colour on this scrap silk, see what it's going to look like, see how the colours are going to blend together and see whether you like the effect or not. So you can mess about as much as you like until you get the colours you want. I'm trying to mix two colours here um, that will blend into each other to give me a kind of variegated petal that, you know, the petals that are darker on the top and lighter towards the centre of the flower. So I'm just... Um, messing about this is great fun so just put some black in there to to darken it up a bit not sure I really like that so just keep going mixing colors until you get the color you want I'm after something that's not too far off the the center panel color but it's just a bit lighter and pinker so these roses are quite big so we're going to use quite a lot of dye See, I've just put some water in that to, to make it lighter. Uh, don't like the black edge colour there. So I'm just going to keep mixing until I find a colour that I like. There we go, that looks possible. A little bit more pink. Get another bit of scrap silk to try this new colour. Yeah, happy with happy with that. We can use this darker purple on one edge. So there, that will be our the colour of our roses. So now we're just going to paint these roses the colour we want them. Um, just. Get a fair amount of dye onto your brush and allow the ribbon just to soak it up um, and that way you won't get any on um, the backing fabric, you won't get any on your other trims, it'll only be where you want it to be on your roses. So I've painted uh, the rose all over with the, the light pink colour and I'm just now touching the edges of the leaves with the, the darker, the edges, edges of the petals sorry, with the darker purple. I'm allowing the colours to blend and separate and I'm just allowing the ribbon and the dye to do um, 
what it wants to do. Don't be tempted to use fabric paints um, on this silk ribbon, it will just wreck the fluidity of the ribbon and it will, you'll lose all of its shine, you'll lose all of its natural fluidity and beauty. So um, silk dyes only, you can use permanent marker pens if you have any uh, pro markers they work just as well. Um, although with a project of this size you might find that you suck quite a lot of juice out of your pro markers which is one of the reasons I'm using silk dye for this project because these roses are quite big. These silk dyes obviously um, are meant for the job. And you can heat set them. Uh, the instructions say to set them with an iron. Obviously that's not possible when we've painted these flowers after we've sewn them because we want them to look like real flowers, um, not squashed little items. Uh, so you can heat set them uh, with a heat gun instead of using an iron and that way you set the dye on the silk um, and all is well. Uh, you should allow this uh, dye to dry for 48 hours before you attempt to heat set it. Um, and then you can just heat set it using a heat gun and hold the gun over these flowers, not too close because uh, you don't want them to burn. Um, just hold the heat gun over them for a period of time. So uh, I've got my painted flowers now and I've got some amethyst chips which I think will look quite nice and I'm just going to now stitch on these amethyst chips uh, underneath this little arrangement. You can use any beads, you can use anything that you happen to have in your stash. Um, just pick things that you think look delightful together and all will be well. So I'm just going to do the laborious uh, stitching on of these little amethyst chips behind your back so you don't have to watch the tediousness of it. And it will all be done magically in a moment. Like that. So um, here's the, the heat setting process. You just need to really blow the heat gun over these flowers when you've allowed them to dry for 48 hours. So I've made uh, these little charms here and I just want to stitch these with some regular stab stitches. I've got now my bottom lining panel cut seven inches by three and a half and I've cut my lining panel main one six inches by 18 inches. So I'm just going to sew the ends of this uh, lining panel together, the, the long one. So I'm just going to pin, uh, run that through the machine and then machine the seam open in exactly the same way that we did on the outside of the bag and you can see there, that's done. So I'm now just going to pin this lining to the bottom lining piece and I'm going to stitch it together in exactly the same way that we stitched the outside of, of the bag together. So I've chosen to do this uh, lining in a nice cotton, this cotton's fairly easy to work with and it's fairly robust for the inside of the bag. So there's it all pinned together. I'm now just going to run a seam round um, about 5mm from the edge. And I'm just going to now um, use the iron to turn over about half an inch at the top and press that. And now I'm going to put the whole thing inside the bag. So you want to make sure that the seams are on the outside of your lining bag so that they're sandwiched inside of the bag itself. So you can see now um, how that lining is going to sit on the inside of this bag and you can just push it around a bit until it feels like it's in the right place for you. I'm just going to use some pins to pin the lining um, all the way through and of course this action now will, will get the silk lining on this band as well. well. We'll push that down with our fingers so that the pins are holding everything nice and tight together. So you can uh, flap around with this for a bit until it sits exactly how you wish it to. And then all we've got to do is just tack that lining. So you're aiming to go through the lining, through the silk and also through the surf but not through the silk on the right side of the bag. And there it's all tacked beautifully and that's our bag all finished so you can order the embroidery materials from craftyattic.com we've got loads of things on our youtube channel for you to have a look and have a go at and thank you very much for watching this video i hope you enjoy making the bag